All right, this video is to teach you how to do the Mondrian project, but before we do the project, I want you to commit to one of your sketches. Do you like the landscape orientation sketch or do you like the portrait orientation sketch that you created? Once you know which one you want to do, you can then go into the project and then you'll download whichever format you need or orientation, either portrait or landscape. Once you've downloaded it, you're going to go ahead and open it. If you did the portrait, this is your portrait one. If you chose landscape, this is your landscape one. Either one doesn't matter um, as far as what the steps are. The steps are the same. It's just a difference of how you're orient orienting your paper. So I chose the portrait and I start off by going to my layers. So the layers has a colored layer, it has square layers, and it has lines um, in the layer. We're going to start with the colors, and this is where you get to pick the three main colors that you're going to be using for your project. So after I've selected my box, I double click on the fill color, which is, which is the top color, and I go ahead and choose my first color. And I'm going to choose my second color. And then I'm going to choose my third color. The colors that you choose are completely up to you entirely. I would try to do some contrasting colors, maybe not make them all dark and all light so that when they're next to each other, they create a nice contrast. Okay. That looks great. I'm going to lock that layer between the eye and the blue line and I'm going to move on to my squares. This is where I would go back and I would look at my sketch either on your desk or the one that you turned in on Canvas and I would place this next to Illustrator open so that I have a visual of what my boxes are supposed to look like or my squares. Even if the square is white, you are still going to place a square. So you need to draw every single square that you see on this artboard or um, drawing. Don't leave any boxes um, empty, even if they're supposed to be white. Because if we printed this on, let's say, blue paper, these squares would become blue if they didn't have the white box. So we need to definitely make sure we do all of the squares. I made them already for you, so I'm going to go ahead and select them all. And hopefully it lets me change my stroke color. It's taking a second. Let me go over here. Okay. So while I was drawing these, I was using a black outline with a no fill because I'm going to go back in and change the colors of all these boxes. Also, when you draw a square and you want to start a new square, you have to start that square from away from the original square. Or, if you did want to start here, you would have to go to your black arrow, deselect it, grab the um, square again, and then start your new square. Just as a keyboard shortcut, so you don't have to keep going back and forth to the toolbar, the square is the letter M on your keyboard, or I should say rectangle, and then the, direct, uh, the actual selection tool, that's V on your keyboard. So you can go ahead and use those two keys on your keyboard so you don't have to be coming back and forth. Okay, now I'm ready to color my squares. I'm going to select my first square, realizing that this is going to be colored, and instead of trying to find this color again, I'm simply going to hit I on my keyboard and click on the color. Now, the box didn't just copy the color, it also copied the fact that there's no stroke on here. So now my stroke, which is good, has gone away on my square, if you can see real quick. Okay, and then I'm just going to come in here. And make some adjustments because I need to make this a separate square that's going to turn into black. So I'm going to click on this box. 
I'm using V for my selection, I for my eyedropper, and actually I don't need an eyedropper for this one because I'm going to color this one black. Notice I just switched my stroke to my fill. So now this is just black but not outlined in black. Whoop. This is going to be white. I'm going to choose white, but I'm going to turn off the outline. It's going to be black with no outline or no fill of white. This is going to be strictly white. Next one is going to be black, and then I'm going to change this color. And just keep going. And as you're laying this out, you might find that you don't like really the colors that you chose. Maybe there's a way that you'd like to change the, um, maybe the value of the color. Maybe it's too dark or too light. Uh, maybe you want to go with a completely different color palette. You don't really like the way this came out. That's totally fine you have that option and I'll show you how to do it quickly so you don't have to click on them individually so this is white again no strokes on these these are purely just color fill there's no outlines it looks like there's an outline around the edge but that's simply just the line the color of the um, artboard the outline I'm realizing this needs to come down, which means this needs to come down too. Okay. All right. Now, let's say you didn't like your yellow. Your yellow is just too, too, um, maybe too, too orange. I want to go a little brighter. Okay. I would click on here, um, unlock my colors, click on my yellow square, come over here, maybe pick another color. Maybe I want, I want to go brighter, maybe, okay? And then I would just go ahead and click on one of the orange boxes over here after locking colors. Hold Shift, select these, and then use your eyedropper and just click down on the box. So now it has changed all of them instead of having you do it individually. So let's go over that again. Unlock your colors, click on the color swatch you want to change, make your changes to the color, lock your colors, and then in the square layer, you're gonna go ahead and hold shift and select all the squares you're trying to change. And then I for eyedropper, click on the color, and then you're done. Okay, all right. Now we're ready to, actually I just realized I need to change these. There we go. Okay, now we're ready to do the lines. I'm going to do that in the next video.